Welcome to another video for my Vintage Electronics channel. And it's about time now I actually got on and built some circuits out of the valves I've got um, and explored the possibilities there. So what I need is a, a prototyping system. Modern breadboards aren't going to cut it. Um, there's a lot of high voltages here, um, big components with uh, thick leads. And I wanted something that was more in, in keeping with the period, 1950s, 1960s prototyping. Now, I've got a couple of books for inspiration. Uh, I had these since I was a child, actually. Uh, the first is Making Transistor Radios by uh, R.H. Wearing. And in here, there is a technique or a few techniques, mainly using planks of wood with nails in and also um, strip board and also using screw down terminals to temporarily clamp um, components to um, a base of wood very, in a very similar way uh, and people will be very familiar with this in the UK if, if they're of my age anyway interested in electronics um, this is a lady bear book making a transistor radio now there's more than one transistor radio in here I built them all um, even on the cover you can see this um, piece of wood here with um, brass screws just holding the um, wires and the components down temporarily. Um, so I want to do something along these lines, um, but modern at, at the same time. So I'm probably going to design some sort of matrix board and 3D print that and just use some brass standoffs with um, screws to hold the components in place. Um, that's the kind of system I'm thinking about. So uh, let's see what I'll come up with. So this is my basic idea for construction. I'm gonna make quite a large matrix board with holes in regularly spaced. And then I'm gonna secure using M4 screws. Just push those through there. And I've got these little standoffs. These are M4 standoffs. That's my pillar to mount the components and wires on. So when it comes to mounting the components, I'm going to use these uh, eyelets um, just to make a very secure connection. Some very high voltages here, and I want to make sure these is going to be as safe as possible. So they'll just hook over there, and then I can in turn just secure those using wing nuts. I chose the wing nuts because I can easily manipulate those with my hands. I could use other more regular nuts, but um, I think using spanners and things to tighten them is just going to be too much of a faff. So we'll see how I'll get on with the wing nuts. So that's the general idea. So let's see how we progress through the design process. So after sketching out some designs, it's on to Tinkercad to uh, generate a 3D design. Uh, I did reject a few prototypes and finally honed in on this particular solution which is an eight by eight matrix. And you'll also notice there's some holes in the corner. This is to accommodate a cover because there's gonna be some very high voltages um, potentially on this system. Also some further holes um, on the edge, but a little closer to the center will allow me to peg modules together. That's kind of a, a clamping system. So it can just um, keep things stable as I expand the system out. and also reduced versions of the same design to create negative and positive power buses. Again, these will have uh, the covers in place and the ability to peg the uh, system into the main board, uh, in fact, any other module as well. So it's on to the 3D printer now to print out the main components, uh, the two buses, the red positive bus, a black negative bus, and uh, a grey main board. Uh, vested in a new uh, flexible bed because uh, they're quite large areas so they do stick quite hard to, um, to glass surfaces. So this is my system pretty much completed. Um, these standoffs are just uh, screwed in there so they're ready to take the uh, components. So it's just a case of uh, using a wing nut there, really, to uh, screw those in. The wing nuts, yeah, look a little bit ugly, but I think they're a little bit 
more convenient for doing this sort of work so you get a general idea of how that fits together there's potentially some very high voltages going along this system if we're using valves so i build this protective cover really just to drop on the top this is supposed to be transparent plastic but um <laughs> didn't print out transparently they never do um and i tried making one out of acetate and it really didn't work very well so i thought printing one was uh, a better thing but it is function better idea but it is it is functional so also what i've done with this i've created these buses um, these are pre-wired so i've got like a, a negative one uh, let's put that the other way around and there's a positive one as well so they can go there so they're pretty wide buses um i can actually lock these together as well got these little clips so if i wanted to uh, lock those then i can just push that in there and this will just hold them in hold it in place so again that's quite a robust way of doing things and again I've got some um, covers which could be deployed if I need to uh, to cover the buses so um, I mean the system the system's never really going to be finished it depends really how much <laughs> different components I actually want to put in there uh, but you're getting an idea of how it all bolts together um, so I need other things as well I'll be doing some work with um, radios. So I've got these vintage variable capacitors, and again, that can just sit in a, in, 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 on its own little module, and it can um, just be connected in the sim same way as the others. Other things I have are output transformers. There's a little output transformer, um, and again, high voltage is there, so that's got a a little cover as well so that's just giving that protection as well um, so yep output transformers speakers uh, this is obviously a modern speaker but it gives you a general idea of what um, I can do with this system as well again just connected in the same way for the valves I've made this uh, 9BA valve holder so um, Again, just plug the valve in and then I can have little jumper wires coming out of here. And I can make as many of these as I need to and different types of valves as well. So that's what I've done with those. Now, when I was a kid, I had um, a Maplin breadboard uh, and it was blue. I had this similar sort of um, control panel. So I made that as well. Again, that hooks into the systems uh, using the same hooks so um i can just populate this with different types of component if, if ever need more then obviously you can just design a different panel and print that off as well make as many of those as you want so that gives you the general idea of what i'm doing with this um so really it's a case now of um maybe just setting up a a prototype system what I don't have is a HG power supply, um, high tension power supply. I've got some things I need to do with that, and I'll go into the reasons um, very shortly as to, to why I haven't built that yet. So I will be kind of restricted to some of my uh, transistors. Um, I made a few components up, and I've got these vintage Soviet era uh, Germanian transistors, so I'll just do something with that. Um, so that's kind of where I am with it. So the high tension power supply, I've got a couple of ways that I may want to go about this. If I'm prototyping some valve equipment, it would be nice to use um, a power supply which has a valve rectifier at least. And that needs to be a variable power supply um, there are some ideas out there on the internet which are probably be worth exploring um, but can be a little bit more complex uh, but we'll look at those if it's just prototyping work i could build a simpler power supply 
and just drop the voltage using some high power resistance. Um, it's a little bit wasteful on energy, but at the end of the day, just just doing some prototyping work. And if I build something more permanent, I can put a um, a more permanent, better design power supply in there. Also, I've got to build another HT power supply for my valve tester just to give it a wider range of voltages. Now, to do that, I've actually got um, a multi-tapped 30 volt transformer, and I was thinking of using um, you using the voltage doubler circuit idea with that as well. So, I could actually just deploy that onto this prototyping system, but that's going to use semiconductor uh, rectifiers and it's probably going to be a little bit potentially aggressive um, with the instant uplift of power um, on some of these circuits. So I'd rather just bring them up slowly. Could use the Variac as well. So I just need to think about this um, and what's the best way of going about it. I haven't made that decision yet. It's just that I do like the idea of using round rectifiers um, for some of this work. So I may just end up building two power supplies and that's probably the way i'm going to go so i thought i'd give the system a bit of a test and actually went together very well this circuit uh, i haven't got the high tension power supply so i thought i'll just build a transistor based um a stable circuit um these are romanian transistors germanium pmp transistors from about 1983 so kind of um, vintage. Um, what I do like about these old components is you get very long leads on them, which suit this sort of construction style, very thick leads as well, so good quality. Um, so all in all, I'm really pleased with that. Um, the wing nuts are very convenient uh, to use. Um, I could swap those for more regular nuts if uh, I want to build something a little bit more permanent, um, just more fiddly using those. Um, so all in all, I'm very pleased with that. So here's the same circuit actually with the covers on. Um, um, those work very well, they don't get in the way. There's actually plenty of clearance between the uh, top of the wing nuts and the base of the case. So a lot of room for large components as well. Um, it's quite effective, quite like the LEDs flashing through the, uh, the translucent uh, plastic there. So it works really well. So I think that's job done on my part. So really happy with that. So that's the prototyping system constructed or initially constructed. There's always going to be new modules to work with that. Uh, and I think it works. I don't think it will work for, for when we get to um, build some valve circuits. So if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and like the videos. Um, the feedback's always appreciated. And I'll catch you with the next project.